If there's one theme that's been persistent in the electric auto industry this year, aside from the high number of problems that automakers who use LG Energy battery packs have suffered as a consequence of said batteries going tits up, it's the number of automakers who've held big events this year, announcing their intention to go fully electric. This year, we've seen Ford, General Motors, Volkswagen, Stellantis, Renault, and others all hold events promising to go fully electric or fully electrified. And now we've got a new one to add to the list, Mercedes-Benz. Earlier today, the luxury automaker laid out a roadmap to a fully electric future from 2030 onwards, and today we're going to go over the salient points. Unlike many of the events we've seen this year, Mercedes-Benz event was a lot smaller. Instead of the multi-hour live-streamed event with Q&A sessions, parent company Daimler published a just over one-hour video on a special website, which took us a whole while to find, as well as a short six-minute video discussing the company's plans on YouTube, as well as issuing a simple press release. The headline announcement that Mercedes-Benz will launch three new vehicle architectures in 2025 that will underpin a new range of models, and that, from that date, newly launched architectures will only be for electric vehicles. By 2030, Mercedes-Benz says it will, quote, be ready to go all electric, which, frankly, is a fantastic piece of news. But like other automakers this year, it added the caveat, quote, where market conditions allow. This suggests that, like other automakers, Mercedes-Benz may be fully electric in Europe and North America by this date, but that in other markets with less strict emissions targets and arguably a less robust electrical infrastructure, internal combustion engine vehicles may continue to be sold. From an environmental standpoint, this is extremely frustrating to see. But this company isn't the first, and it won't be the last, to couch its plug-in vehicle commitments with less than clear terminology. Vagaries aside, let's look at the three platforms laid out. First, there will be the MBEA, a platform designed to underpin all medium to large passenger vehicles made with the Mercedes-Benz badge. Like most modern automotive platforms, it will offer a scalable modular design, meaning a variety of different sized vehicles can be built using a core of common components, most noticeably battery packs and drivetrains. Then there will be AMG EA, which, as the name suggests, will underpin high-performance electric vehicles destined to wear the coveted Mercedes AMG badge. It's interesting to see here that there will be a completely different platform for higher-end performance vehicles, and it does seem to suggest that perhaps cars like the S-Class, for example, might end up being built across two platforms to ensure both regular customers and AMG customers are satisfied. This also suggests that there's enough similarity between MBEA and AMGEA to make that possible, so that latter platform might just refer to accommodations of higher power drivetrains and perhaps a more performance-oriented battery pack. Finally, there will be the Van EA, a platform that will underpin both passenger vans and commercial vans to wear the Mercedes-Benz badge. So think about everything from the e-Vito all the way up to the e-Sprinter and beyond. On to batteries and drivetrains. Underpinning all of these platforms will be a vertical integration philosophy that will see Mercedes-Benz and parent company Daimler produce as many of the components and drivetrains needed for its electric vehicles in-house. This includes acquiring Yaza, a UK-based company known for its electric motors. Most importantly, its Axial Flux motors. It will become a 100% owned subsidiary of Mercedes-Benz. Interestingly, though, while Mercedes-Benz is looking to the UK to help it with motor development, it also says that it intends to heavily rely on China to source EV components and software for use in its vehicles. While it's not clear if Mercedes-Benz will look to acquire companies there or not, it does acknowledge that the rise of both NEVs and highway-capable cars in China mean that it's a great resource to tap for its own EV development plans. 
When it comes to batteries, Mercedes-Benz says it will need 200 gigawatt hours of cells per year by the end of 2030, and that it will set up eight gigafactories along with battery partners around the world to make that happen. Like other automakers this year, Mercedes-Benz is looking to standardize battery packs as much as possible and says more than 90% of its vehicles will be based on a common battery platform. But while physical pack designs will remain similar, chemistries will change depending on use case and market. We didn't get the level of battery deep dives that we've had from other companies, but Mercedes-Benz did highlight development of high silicon content anodes as being one of its key goals in the next few years, working with battery partners Scylla Nano to develop silicon carbon composite anodes. It says the technology will enable it to develop increasingly high energy density battery cells. Currently, it says it's NMC811 battery cells, that's nickel manganese cobalt, as will be used in the upcoming EQS, have an energy density of around 550 watt hours per litre at the cell level. They offer, in the EQS, a total battery pack capacity of 111 kilowatt hours. Using Sela Nano's technology, it says a volumetric energy density of 900 watt hours per litre will be possible in the future. Like other rivals, the company is also very keen to pursue solid-state battery tech and says it's, quote, in talks with partners to develop batteries with even higher energy density and safety. What's worth noting here, of course, is that while most automakers are still in the laboratory stage with developing solid-state batteries for EVs, Mercedes-Benz already has some experience in the area. That's because Mercedes-Benz's sister company, Daimler Bus, already has e buses on the road in Europe fitted with solid-state batteries, having launched the all-electric e G last September. That bus has a solid-state battery that holds 441 kilowatt hours of electricity, is guaranteed for up to 10 years or 280 megawatt hours of throughput, and it contains zero cobalt. With its partners, Mercedes-Benz promises solid-state batteries can exceed 1,200 watt-hours per litre and more than 400 watt-hours per kilogram. To support all these new electric vehicles it plans to bring to market, Mercedes-Benz is committed to building its future vehicles with plug-and-charge technology as standard, with the EQS being the first car to get that later this year. Working with Shell, it says it will expand charging provision across Europe, with customers due to get, quote, enhanced access to Shell's global network of charging stations. Shell, of course, having previously purchased a large number of charging networks across the world in the last 12 months. Mercedes' own in-house charging software, Mercedes Me, will also play an important role in letting customers pick and navigate to the next charging site and, in Europe, the brand says it plans to launch what it is calling premium charging sites to offer, quote, a bespoke charging experience with top-notch facilities. This, I am guessing, is a response to Tesla's plans to expand the facilities at some of its more popular supercharger sites around the world, not to mention Porsche's plan to open Porsche-only charging lounge facilities for its customers in high-use traffic areas. We, of course, already know that the Mercedes-Benz EQS will feature 800-volt quick charging, and I'm guessing that will remain a feature in future Mercedes-Benz models. And while I never heard that uttered during the two presentations I watched, I think it's fair enough to expect. With less technical stuff disclosed in this presentation, there's not a lot else I can tell you about Mercedes-Benz plans, but honestly, that's kind of in line with how its presentations are. They tend to focus on the end product and experience from a customer point of view, rather than going all in on technical details. After all, it is a luxury automaker. What it did share, however, was the news that by next year, eight EV models will be produced across three continents using batteries supplied by the brand's worldwide network. Additionally, all of its car factories and battery production facilities, although it doesn't look like its van and truck factories will join in yet, will be carbon neutral. In a similar vein, Mercedes-Benz promises it's finalizing its first battery recycling facility where it will develop a closed loop battery recycling process. So far then, everything we've heard from Mercedes-Benz is pretty standard compared to what we've heard from other automakers this year. 
But one thing I didn't expect, and I think many of you will find funny, is the announcement that Mercedes-Benz is going to switch to a direct-to-customer sales model. This, it claims, takes costs out and ensures a more even pricing for customers, which is what many Tesla fans have been saying all along. Does it mean the end of dealerships? I doubt it. Like Volvo and other companies that have also announced a switch to direct-to-customer sales models, expect Mercedes to use its dealer network for service and after-sales, as well as handling pre-delivery inspections and handovers. Where possible, I'm guessing the dealers won't have to do anything with the finances, but obviously, in some parts of the world where dealer unions have successfully campaigned to make direct-to-customer sales models illegal, things might be less clear-cut. Finally, we got to see a sneak peek of Mercedes-Benz's latest concept car. And I say latest because Mercedes-Benz really loves making electric concept cars. I've actually lost track of how many exist, although to be fair, in Europe, there are now a fair number of all-electric Mercedes models you can buy that started off as concepts. This new concept car, called the Vision EQ XX, which made me wonder if it's for mature audiences only, is a car that the company says manages to achieve a real-world range of more than 1,000 kilometres, 621 miles per charge, with a, quote, single-digit figure for kilowatt-hours per 100 kilometres, that's about six miles per kilowatt-hour, at highway speeds. The car itself won't be revealed until 2022, but it's believed to use a significant amount of technology from Mercedes-Benz F1 high-performance powertrain division. As is often the case with teasers, there's not a lot we can tell from it other than a very aerodynamic shape, so I'm not going to dwell too much on it here. So that's it. Mercedes-Benz produces fewer cars than some of the other automotive companies we've covered presentations from this year, but like so many other companies out there, it's realised at last that the future is electric, either through pressure from the world's various governments or from a continued loss of customers to Tesla and others. It's great to see it up its already established plug-in vehicle strategy, but what do you think? Leave your thoughts below. That's it for today, and yes, today I am going to get the editing right. Bonus points to those of you who noticed that I screwed up yesterday's closer, and hey, Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. I didn't know how many of you did that. I'm going to take full responsibility for that cock up as I was working later than I should have done. But don't worry, I've already docked my pay for the week and I'll be staying behind after class. Please do hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't yet as it should make sure you don't miss out on our other videos. And please do the same to our other two channels, Transport Evolved Take Two, and if you're in a hurry, Transport Evolved Shorts. Thanks on behalf of the entire T crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, that's Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Anonymous Freak, Regine Fellows, Carl Hodgson, Gordon C, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, and Tesla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. You can chat with the team and T fans over at Discord, where's a link below. And of course, if you'd like a fabulous t-shirt just like this one, don't forget to head to our Redbubble store. There is a link below. Thanks for joining me and as always, keep evolving!